Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm going to call this episode Java and Gibberish. Good morning to you all. And uh, I'm going to tell you a couple happenings here recently. And uh, I told you before I, I applied for – no, I didn't apply. I, I actually registered to get these uh, Blue Crab Trap registration numbers and everything. So they were supposed to be coming out through the U.S. mail. Never got them. So <laughs> – this, I'm going to try and make this a short story, but then I'm going to move on to the rest of the gibberish. But uh, so, like, I kid you not, it's been like a month. So I'm driving down the road yesterday, and I'm going southbound on, on Highway US 41 to go check on my mom. And I look over, and there's a gas station called Circle K. And I glance over, and I see an FWC officer at, at the gas pump. So I'm like, all right, I've been, you know, they're usually out and about, and, you know, you see them different times, you know, but it, I hadn't seen one in a while. So I'm like, I, I make a, I had to go about a quarter mile down the road, make a U-turn, come back, hoping he's still there. So I, I kind of pull up next to him, and I get out, and, you know, he was still fueling and doing his thing, you know. And, uh, you know, I politely said, excuse me, sir, you, you mind if I talk to you or something like, you know, something polite, you know. So I, I, I kind of tell him my story about, you know, I had all my fresh water, salt water, my shoreline license, you know, and, and I registered the blue crab traps. I tell him the whole story. So uh, he, uh, hold on one sec. All right. So I tell him the whole story and, uh, you know, he, he, he's looking at me, you know, he's like, oh, no, no. You know, I'm, I'm talking to him about the registration numbers and all this stuff. And here I go talking like an Italian again. But anyway, I, I get uh, talking to him, you know, and what I had read was your float has to have a B on it. I think I told you guys this earlier, B for blue crab and a big S for stone crab. And then, you know, you have your line, your traps, whatever. And then you have to affix your registration number, your name, your address, everything. You know, I didn't, you know, I'm not going to put my social security number. I don't think they asked for that, but, you know, like you never know in today's times what they're going to ask you for. But so anyway, so uh, I get talking to him and, he, and he's telling me, he goes, Oh no, no. All you need to do is put the uh, R on the, on the float for recreational and like some like last four of your social security number or something like that. So I'm like, yeah, I, I think that used to be the way, but what I read recently that is no longer, you know, the, uh, the proper process. He goes, no, I don't, I don't, you know, pretty, he was pretty cool about that. I mean, he was a younger guy and I want to say he was probably like around 30. So I don't know how long he'd been doing his job, but he seemed kind of naive to this whole, uh, um, new regulation or whatever, I guess you could say. And we're, we're right near the coastal water. So, uh, there should be some type of memorandum sent down or something like that, which he didn't know. I'm not, I'm not. The officer was a very nice guy. He helped me solve my problem. So I, I'm just telling you, it's just kind of funny, like how this officer had no idea. And this, I think, went into effect in March, if I'm not mistaken. So anyway, so the um, we get talking. He, he ends up, he asked me, if, I, I gave him an, my old copy of my license, my, my fishing license, because that's the waterproof copy now. The ones they give you now when you go to any any type of retailer, it's a paper copy. Then you have to go to uh, like a place like Office Depot or Staples or something like that to get it laminated. And it's going to cost you. It's like, to me, it's just like, I, I understand the government's got to try and find ways to save money. I, I get that. So the way I've found a way to save money is you have a customer number, ID number at the top. So I can keep that that waterproof uh, license in my, my little... Uh, I call it a billfold. It's actually like a Q-tip, you know, a portable Q-tip board. I keep all my credit cards, everything in there. So I, I give him that. Then he asked me for my driver's license. And this is where it gets kind of funny. And uh, I thought he was just trying to, like, verify the, the name and everything. And his his um, his laptop is on, like, a 45-degree like a angle or a 30-degree angle, something like that, facing him as, you know, so he can do his business while he's driving or parked, whatever. I get that. I'm, I'm all good with that. So, <laughs> so 
So he's got his back turned to me. I'm kind of looking over his shoulder just periodically. And and, and I go to grab my paper, uh, my paper licenses that I keep with my driver's uh, registration and all that stuff because I don't want that to get wet because it's not laminated. So I just keep my old waterproof license. So I know it sounds like a ramble, but there's a point here I'm going to make. So uh, <laughs> I look over his shoulder, and all of a sudden I see my my driver's license picture on his laptop, and he's like running me to see if like like I'm wanted, like I wanted. I'm like I'm thinking, to myself, how stupid is that? I'm going to go out of my way to talk to an officer of the law who has total uh, legal jurisdiction in the whole entire state of Florida. I'm going to ask him for assistance and like I'm going to be some wanted felon or something. I I just kind of, I looked at that. I kind of chuckled and then he, then he, next thing I know it, he's grabbing a piece of paper and he, he jots down the numbers and it, it was, uh, I have it right here. I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to tell you the numbers, but I'm going to tell you the sequence. All right. Sorry about that. I should have had this prepared. I, I kind of thought I had it in memory, but apparently I did not. So anyway, there's going to be a letter prefacing the uh, seven numbers. So I'm assuming the way I'm, I'm interpreting this, B would stand for blue graph. Then you're going to have seven consecutive numbers. And then the way I interpret this, you know, you can, I already knew this. You, you can only have as a recreational crab, where you can only have um, up to five crab traps, crab pods, whatever you want to call them. So, so basically, you're going to have a, a letter which would be B, or a letter would be S, is what I'm assuming in this situation. Then there's going to be, I in this case, it's seven numbers, so it may not always be seven numbers. But and then what I did was I hit, I, I I did dash one dash two, you know. So that's kind of like what was inferred to me here on this. Uh, so basically, I'm allowed up to five registration numbers for blue crabbing. It's all good. So I just uh, prepared all that uh, on the uh, laptop yesterday. And uh, I'm, I'm going to send it to Office Depot, whatever they call themselves nowadays, and get it laminated and have the whole punch and then they use the zip tie. You know, it's just like, a long drawn out process, but I've waited like a month to get this done. And it was so funny because the uh, FW, FWC stands for uh, Florida Wildlife Commission, in case anybody doesn't understand that. But this guy had no clue to, to you know, this regulation change. So I don't know what type of uh, updates they have to go through. You would think they would have to sign a memo, like in the old days, you know, when I worked for a law enforcement agency, you know, Delaware State Police, even as a dispatch, you always had to sign like a memo. You would think there'd be some type of email acknowledgement or something, but I got, he didn't know about it. No big deal. I'm like, I'm like, he was really cool. Helped me out with my problem. Now I'm good to go. Now I can put my crab pot in the water. If I want to buy more, I only have one, you know, I just want to test the waters. I've done it before in the past. So, um, so that's, that's kind of like this morning's gibberish, you know, with the Java. And uh, I will tell you uh, so, some really cool things have been happening, you know, as far as the subscription uh, levels going on. Like some people like have really blown my mind. And um, it's just like, it's, you ever hear that old expression, like when you least expect it, expect it. Well, that happened to me on Sunday, and uh, I just did a little short video talking about, you know, a couple things for a giveaway in the future, and, and all of a sudden, next thing I know, it was like, and I thought the quality, I looked at, I watched the video a couple times, I thought the quality was pretty much terrible, but I was just trying to kill time because I was sitting in my hot van selling tackle outdoors, and a few hours later, the, the rain came in sideways, it just like, Turned out to be, it started off to be a very profitable day, and I thought it, was, it could have been an epic day, and then the rain just, uh, in the morning, it kept saying 20% chance of rain all day, and I, as I was sitting there, I saw these 
a dark cloud comes, I'm like, that's probably just a one random dark cloud. It's it's all going to be good. And then, you know, I'm doing my thing, you know, watching YouTube and all that stuff. And then um, all of a sudden I check again and all of a sudden now it's a 76% chance of uh, rain and it's going to hit in like the next 25 minutes. So I am freaking out because it takes me over an hour to, uh, to, down, down pack, you know, uh, repack to exit, you know, and there's a lot of stuff that has cardboard on it and, you know, you don't want it to get wet and the overhang I was under was, uh, was not real wide. And so I'm like, oh man, it's like, this is kind of my biggest fear. That's why I always watch the weather. And I probably didn't watch the weather for like about a two hour period there. And then until I saw this notice and and then I was like, oh, my gosh. So now I, I, you kind of learn. You live and learn. That's the old saying, right? So uh, anyway, so I survived. I could have made more money. The, you know, the weather. And this is Florida, you know. So hopefully it's going to break here soon. And, uh, you know, I mean, it, it could break either for the good or for the bad. You know, we're, we're due for a tropical storm or hurricane. Usually that's August, September. You know, everyone, you know, October sometimes, but hopefully it happens during the week and I, I can sell out there on the weekends. But um, anyway, I, I, I'm pretty sure I have more gibberish I want to tell you. I, you know, I may carry this on to another episode. You know, I, I have no idea. Like, this is totally a random thing. And I know people do, like, coffee at breakfast and, you know, all that stuff. So this is just, I'm just going to call this Java and gibberish, so, you know. So, um, if you have any questions, hit me up. If you have any morning uh, rituals you like to do, or you, you know, you want to give me suggestions, I only drink Dunkin' Donuts coffee. I, I'm going to tell you straight up. I none of these other places. So, you know, the only job I'm going to drink is Dunkin' Donuts, and it's got to be done, you know, the G Money way. Yeah, you know, cream and sugar. And none of this other stuff, you know. So, and every once in a while, you do get a bad cop, but I will say Dunkin' Donuts is pretty good about being consistent. When I do it here at the, at the crib, you know, I, I I have I'm pretty good about being systematic with it. I'm not in a rush like an employee would or whatever. So it's always consistent. So uh, that's enough of that. And you know, we're gonna we'll be talking again soon. And I don't even know if I'm gonna post this, you know, because I always got to reevaluate and. Is this worthy? You know, am I going to get one more subscriber out of this? If the answer is yes, then hell yeah, I'm going to post it. Y'all take care.